Hello and welcome to Red Risks. Thank you for being here. In this short video, I'm going to be covering safety critical equipment, specifically looking at identifying and managing safety critical equipment, also known as SCE. Let's dive in. Don't forget to subscribe and I can keep you updated with all the latest videos. So what exactly is safety critical equipment? Well, safety critical equipment, SCE, refers to any equipment or structure whose failure could lead to a major accident. This also includes both the physical hardware as well as the software and logic systems that control its operation. The scope of SCE encompasses a wide range of critical systems and components found in industrial facilities such as emergency shutdown systems, fire and gas detection, pressure relief valves and also escape and evacuation systems. Some common examples of SCE includes things like emergency shutdown systems, fire and gas detection systems, pressure relief valves, and escape and evacuation systems, which we've mentioned previously, all of which, by the way, are essential for preventing and mitigating the consequences of major accidents. Let's now explore a bit further in terms of defining major accidents, and these can include but also not limited to some of the following. Uncontrolled fires and explosions with the potential for multiple fatalities or major environmental damage. When we look at hazardous substances releases, this includes any unintended releases of dangerous chemicals or materials that could severely impact the environment and surrounding communities. With regards to structural failures, we may have catastrophic failures of critical infrastructure like buildings, bridges, or offshore platforms that could lead to loss of life. In essence, when we think about major accidents, major accidents are defined as events with the potential for multiple fatalities or major environmental damage that could lead to serious public reaction. Examples include things like fires, explosions, hazardous substance releases, and structural failures, all of which can have devastating consequences for workers, communities, and the environment. When we look at the role of the safety critical ones in HSC management, we could consider the following. Safety critical equipment could be integrity barriers. Here, safety critical equipment form critical layers of protection within the Swiss cheese model of accident prevention, acting as essential integrity barriers to mitigate the risk of accidents. In terms of life cycle approaches, managing safety critical equipment involves a comprehensive approach from identification to decommissioning, ensuring that performance and integrity are maintained throughout the entire equipment cycle. I'm sure many of you have heard of performance standards and each safety critical equipment has a defined performance standard outlining its required performance pass or fail criteria and contingency actions providing a clear benchmark for assessing and monitoring its effectiveness. When it comes to assuring activities, a combination of design reviews, inspections, testing and monitoring are conducted to ensure safety critical equipment performance and integrity, verifying that they can reliably fulfill their critical safety functions. The typical selection process for safety critical equipment will include some of the following. So the first step you could consider it in this selection process is to thoroughly review the HSC case and supporting studies to identify potential major accidents and associated risks. This comprehensive risk assessment serves as the foundation for the safety critical equipment selection. The next step might be to convene a multidisciplinary expert panel a cross-functional team of experts, including personnel from operations, HSE, process safety, maintenance, and technical authorities. They're assembled together to evaluate and identify risks and determine the critical equipment needed to mitigate them. So this diverse perspective ensures a thorough evaluation. With regards to evaluating and selecting appropriate SCEs, the expert panel closely examines the potential major accident scenarios and assesses the equipment, systems and barriers required to prevent or mitigate these accidents. Based on this analysis, the panel then selects the safety critical equipment 
that are essential for maintaining safe operations. But what is the role of this expert panel? What do they exactly do? So some things that they may do is to review generic lists. So the expert panel should start by reviewing existing general lists of potential safety critical equipment as a starting point for their analysis. These lists can provide a comprehensive overview of common safety critical equipment categories across industries. They could also be considering installation specifics. The panel might, might adopt the generic list based on the unique design, operation and identified hazards of the specific installation under review. This ensures the safety critical equipment selection is tailored to the facility's unique characteristics. When it comes to looking at determining safety critical elements, through detailed analysis, the expert panel will identify the truly safety critical subsystems and components within each system. This granular examination is key to ensuring the, the SCE selection is comprehensive and also accurate. We have to look at key considerations for the selection of SCE. So identifying equipment that is crucial for preventing or mitigating major accidents is a key consideration in this SCE selection process. This involves thoroughly understanding the potential accident scenarios and the role that specific systems and components play in risk management. We also have to look at identifying integrity barriers. So determining which systems and components are critical to the effectiveness of each safety barrier is essential. This helps us to ensure that the selected SCEs are responsible for maintaining the integrity of these vital barriers against major accidents. Now, distinguishing significant contributions. The focus should be on equipment with a significant impact on risk management, rather than including every piece of equipment that may have some influence. This helps us to prioritize the most critical assets and streamline the SCE selection process. When it comes to redundancy and diversity, assessing the need for redundancy or diversity in SCEs based on hazard risk levels is important. This can help ensure that multiple layers of protection are in place, reducing the vulnerability of the overall safety system to single points of failure. We mustn't, of course, forget documenting this selection process, and we should take into consideration things like the rationale for inclusion or exclusion. We have to clearly document the reasons for selecting or rejecting specific items as SCE. This provides a transparent record of the decision-making process. Detailed records of expert panel discussion should also be maintained, and we should maintain comprehensive records of the discussions and the decisions made by the expert panel. This ensures accountability and traceability for the SCE selection process. We should keep an SCE register. And this, should, this is where we create a comprehensive register of all identified SCEs, which forms the basis for ongoing change management and performance monitoring. We'll look at change management a little bit further on in the presentation. For developing performance standards, we should take into consideration goal alignment and define clear measurable goals for the SCE that align with its role in major accident risk management. We have to ensure that the performance standards are specific achievable and time bound. I'm sure you've come across this before as the acronym as SMART. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound. In terms of functionality, we have to establish performance standards that address the core functionality of the SCE, such as operating parameters, capacity and responsiveness. These standards are crucial for ensuring the SCE can fulfill its intended purpose during emergency situations. We should develop performance standards that address the SCE's reliability and availability, ensuring it can consistently and dependably operate when needed to mitigate major accident risks. So consider factors like mean time between failures and maintenance requirements. Survivability refers to an SE's ability to function as intended when subjected to harsh conditions that might arise during a major accident. Dependencies are where we're highlighting the reliance of an SE on other systems or elements for its proper functioning. And we mustn't, of course, forget our acceptance criteria. We need to define that smart, specific, measurable and achievable parameters that an SE must meet to be considered functional 
and capable of performing its intended safety function. Assurance is also a key part of SCE. Thorough design reviews, including HAZOP studies, design reviews, and instrumented protective functions, or IPF reviews, are conducted to verify the integrity and reliability of the SCE's design. So these activities ensure that the SEs are designed to meet the necessary safety and performance standards. During the construction and commissioning phases, detailed inspections are conducted to ensure the proper installation and successful commissioning of the SEs. These inspections verify that the equipment is installed according to the design specs and is functioning as intended before being put into operation. Once the SCEs are in operation, a comprehensive program of regular inspections, maintenance, testing, and reliability monitoring is implemented. These activities are designed to ensure the continued performance and availability of the SEs, as well as to identify and address any emerging issues or degradation in their condition. Now for data analysis and performance monitoring, we need to consider the following. This includes data collection analysis, where we analyze data from assurance activities to assess the performance of SCE and identify any shortfalls or deficiencies. We need to utilize maintenance management systems, typically things like SAP PM, to gather and analyze this data. We will, of course, perform trend analysis on the collected data to identify recurring issues or patterns or signals that may indicate the need for corrective action. This can help prevent future failures and ensure the continued integrity of the SCE. There will of course be opportunities for corrective actions and based on the data analysis and identified efficiencies, we can implement appropriate corrective actions to address the issues and restore the system's integrity. This may involve maintenance, repairs, or other interventions to ensure the SCE continues to function safely and reliably. Mentioned earlier in the slide sessions, management change. And for management of change, we should take into consideration some of the following. Impact assessment, we need to thoroughly assess the impact of any modification on SCE and their defined performance standards. We must evaluate the potential risks and ensure changes are within the acceptable or tolerable limits. We need to promptly update the SCE register and performance standards to accurately reflect any changes made. We must maintain a comprehensive and up-to-date record of all the SCEs and their associated requirements. With regards to MOC procedures, we must of course implement robust MOC procedures to ensure all modifications to SCEs are controlled and documented. Establish a formal process for reviewing, approving, and tracking changes as it should be embedded within the MOC procedure. When it comes to managing SE overrides and defeats, we must ensure some of the following. We have to implement that robust procedure to control, strictly control, and thoroughly document any overrides of the SCE. This ensures transparency and accountability in the management of these critical systems. The procedure for managing SCE overrides should focus on minimizing the time that these critical systems are in a bypassed state. This helps to maintain the intended safety protection as much as possible. We must of course have restoration to normal operation. After an override, the procedures must ensure that the SCE is promptly restored to its normal operating condition. This helps to maintain the overall integrity of the safety system and reduce the risk of incidents. Let's not forget continuous improve. Regular review and update the registers, the safety critical equipment registers and performance standards. It should be based on accumulated experience, new information and changing operational conditions. This ensures that the management system remains relevant and is effective. With regards to performance monitoring analysis, continuously track key performance indicators, KPIs related to SE performance, such as test results and failure rates. Analyze this data to identify trends, issues, and opportunities for improvement. We should thoroughly investigate any failures or deviations from performance standards to identify the root causes. We then implement corrective actions to address the underlying issues and prevent recurrence. It's always good to share, and with best practice sharing, we should foster a culture of communication and knowledge sharing, both within the organization and across different sites. This allows for the dissemination of lessons learned and the adoption of proven best practices. 
In conclusion then, for importance of SE management, its effective in identification and management of SE are essential for maintaining process safety and preventing major accidents in high-risk industries. Managing SEEs requires a comprehensive approach that takes into consideration the entire life cycle of the equipment, that's from design to decommissioning, to ensure safety and reliability. We mustn't, of course, forget continuous improvement. A commitment to continuously improve ensures that SE management systems remain effective and adaptable to changing conditions and emerging risks, enhancing safety over the long term. I hope that short presentation gave you an insight into safety critical equipment. If you're new to the channel, of course, please subscribe and I can update you with videos as I upload them. But if you've been here before, of course, I welcome your thoughts and comments as of course all newcomers. It's always good to have continuous improvement when it comes to creating these videos. Thank you. Catch you on the next one.